Hi, and welcome to another episode of Real Leaders, Real Connection. And today I've got Charles with me. I'm really excited. I've known Charles for quite a while. And as always, I just uh, really want to hear the stories, the, the real stories, the real people, and make real connection with leaders that are around us all the time. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you know have a look at what other interviews we've got there. We've got lots of conversations going and it's all really exciting and really fun. So welcome, Charles. Good, good day. I was yeah, going to say good morning, where are you? but I don't know, know where you are. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm already at the end of my day. <laughs> yes, and I'm just beginning mine. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, wonderful. So yeah. I'm thrilled to have you here, and I'd really like to kick off by asking you, can you please share a story from your life that was particularly significant or meaningful to you that somehow shifted you or changed you? Wow, that's the... I think there was a lot of events in my life that sort of persuaded me to take on the role that I'm doing right now. Um, but I think like, like there was, there was one moment in, um, in my previous career in a, as a di in a digital agency, I was doing technology development and stuff. And I was, I was put in a leadership role and um, which was new to me at the time, but it was about mentoring some young people into their careers and stuff. And, and I found so that was so engaging and so inspiring. And I was so appreciative of all the things I learned about managing a team of people. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, it was just deep with learning, just understanding how people wanted to work and what they were aspiring to and giving them opportunities to grow. And um, I left that position with them expressing so much gratitude for me. Right. And, and it's, a, it's and a that, privilege to be in that kind of a role, you know. Oh, oh, totally. Awesome. And um, you know, I I didn't take it for granted that that opportunity to lead a team. Can you um, tell us a story? Because I love connecting to the stories. Tell us a story about yeah. maybe a young person that you mentored and kind of what the impact was for you and for them, I suppose. Well, there was particular. There was two particular team members on that on that in that group. Um, both of them were, I would say, were junior intermediate creatives that I was working with. And, you know, it was to get them out of their shell. It was to get them, they were both very introverted people, very shy, intimidated by, you know, executives and whatnot, but wanting to learn to grow, right? And um, through a course of a period of time, I was giving them all opportunities to grow in the role, having them present their ideas to teams having them to take charge of things. And it was quite a delight to have, there was one particular board meeting I remember, we were pitching an idea to an executive and they just rocked it. I just yeah. sat back and just watched them reveal their own ideas and get the feedback. Of course they got in, they're all anxious and nervous and stuff, but when they okay. got through it and we debriefed afterward, they were like glowing. On a high, I can just like imagine. Completely on a high, because they didn't think it was their within them to do it right um but you know each time after that was a new challenge okay what, so what did what it mean to you um having seeing these people two people who are quite introverted probably scared as anything to present in front of a group of people and then you see them doing it and they're on a high what did it mean to you how did that change you oh man it, it just it just showed it showed me so many things and one it showed me that my capacity to lead and, and to and leading not so that I have to be the one on the stage, but leading and supporting people, like coaching, mentoring others in their in their relation in their in their growth. Mm -hmm. um, but it also was a sense of pride that I was able to create that opportunity mm -hmm. for them, right? And to receive their gratitude after was was so fulfilling for me, and it just inspired me to keep going on that path. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So do we have time for another story? Maybe tell us something, you know, from your life. I'm sure, oh. I'm sure you've got stories to tell. Like maybe if I can challenge you to go a little bit more personal, perhaps. Oh, okay. More personal. Yeah. Um, wow. So in regards to leadership, in regards to growth. Anything that, that really... For me, what's interesting is, you know, we have those watershed moments where before that we have a certain perspective, a certain view, a certain way of being, and then something right. happens and it shifts us and we kind of, something changes. Right. 
Well, you know what? There's, you know, I had a digital agency myself for a number of years. And in the time of the recession in North America, it was around 2008, 2009, I had to close mm -hmm. my shop down. Uh, wow. And that was a very heartbreaking moment for me because I had to let go of a business partner and a good friend of mine. I had to lay off employees. So it was a very devastating period of time wow. for me. I couldn't okay. sleep at night. I was anxious. I was almost, you know, felt depressed at moment, some points. But it had me reflect on some of the things that I had learned through that experience and where to go to next, right? Mm. Though it took me a long journey to sort of recover. But it gave me that, that moment of adversity there was sort of the fuel to sort of do some deep reflection of what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't do in business, business is, is hard, as you would know, keeping, keeping your business afloat, you know, planning and doing sales and marketing and everything is very hard. For sure. And especially if you want to have a personal life and have family and stuff is very tough. Um, but I've learned now that adversity is like a, is like a blessing. It's like, if you can look at it through curiosity, you can learn things and it was hard in the beginning because mm -hmm. like I'm here like frustrated and I'm angry at myself for missing the signs with the recession yeah. and everything. And, you know, I was very grief stricken to have to lay off so I many I can imagine. People. I can imagine. So the devastation, the disappointment, the actual having to make that decision to close down, I'm sure that takes time. It and takes time really and, and energy too, just emotional energy. And I had to grieve that for a period of time. Of course. Of course. And then but when do you realize, when do you see that there's a gift in that? Because I think then we have a turning point and we say, okay, something, maybe, maybe, maybe something good came out of it. Maybe some, maybe I learned something. When, when do you actually start to see that or have an awareness of that? I think first I had to process the grief and the anger. Yes. Having sure. felt like I failed. Right. Um, and, um, but once I got past that, you know, then I was looking at, okay, um, Okay, what what happened? What truly happened there, and how was I being in that? How did I co-create the failure of the business? Where did I lead? You know, let myself down and let other people down. So it was a lot of deep reflection mm -hmm. from myself. I and wasn't taking blaming respons taking responsibility and ownership. Absolutely, like I wasn't blaming the recession for my mm, failure. Amazing, but, yeah. right? I had to learn to say, okay, I had to take responsibility for it. I had to come with a sort of sense of humility. Wow. That, wow. You know, I don't have it all under control. Um, but once I got clear on that, and then I said, okay, well, all right, I'm not shut off from being an entrepreneur again. Like I, I, I'm running a business myself now, one more mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm learning from the lessons from back then and I'm applying them to here now. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just growing from that experience. Yeah. So I think what you're highlighting here is that we can so often take the root of the blame game. You know, it's external circumstances and they're always external circumstances. We can blame and things that are outside of our control. And yet Absolutely. when you take a step back and say, what is my ownership? What is my responsibility in this? It just takes a completely different meaning. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's particularly hard. Whether you're an executive or you're an entrepreneur and you have your own business, yeah. it's very easy to blame others or circumstances or situations for your shortcomings or your failures. But I think if you ask a different question about yourself and how you, then there's a lesson, there's something for you to learn. So but what you is have the biggest past... lesson that you, you've learned that you would also be able to kind of give as a message for people who are you know, possibly going through some tough moments themselves? Be patient with yourself. Mm. I what think does that we're, mean? How do you be I patient think we're, with yourself? I think, we're so, I think we're so trained or conditioned to get progress or to get results now. But sometimes in that you miss the details. You miss certain red flags. You miss certain issues things that you like need to check off you take shortcuts and whatnot to get to the result um but i look at it as you know we're in business for the long term we're in business for it's like a marathon yeah. it's playing not a the long game actually it's not looking looking. looking for those quick wins like what can i get out you know yeah i think we're so conditioned to think quick wins yeah. but i think immediate gratification exactly and we compromise too much in that Mm -hmm. um and you know so me being patient is to say okay well plan not worry about being perfect either but plan execute learn plan execute learn yeah and then yeah. take the insight and and okay what did that teach me what did i learn from that and then apply that to the next one 
but you know what? It is a marathon. It's not a sprint. <laughs> and I love what you're saying about that because as a business owner, I can so relate that we are, when we're committed to ourselves and our business, we know that we're playing a long game. We're not yes. there to kind of, okay, well, how quickly can I get money out? Or how quickly can I get this out? Or how can I quickly yes. get, you know, that whole myth of when you, when it's your own business, you get to have so much time because you get to decide. Oh. <laughs> There's no time. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse. Oh no one God. gets it. It's worse. <laughs> no. Like, I, I, like I, 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 you know, it's like this whole, there's this whole hustle trend right now in, in coaching and, 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 and in entrepreneurship and startups and stuff like that. Look at, man, you're, you're, you have to accept the fact that you're giving up your life to run a business. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It's so yeah. true. And actually, so you, while you are in this and you know that you're playing the long game, also to take out the learnings, take responsibility. And I would add to that, find the joy in the everyday moments, because if you're going to wait for it also for some day to come, I also think you're not on the right track. No. Plus, I'll, one, I'll add to that too, is give yourself time to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, personal yeah. care, Crit critical. personal care, absolutely critical. And I think that was one thing I learned by running my business is I burned myself out. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was working 24-7, 365, and I had burned myself out. Yeah. So yeah. self -care, I think it's easy to fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. And that goes with executives too. If you're yeah. working in the corporate environment, it's very easy for executives to work 70, 80 hours a week. Right, right. And that's not healthy either. Yeah, so. yeah. Wow. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Charles. So my you're final welcome. question always is tell us where you are in the world and what do you love about living in your city? Because we've had oh. some different places. <laughs> well, I am in Toronto. Okay. I'm in Toronto and I just live, I live in a little um, township called Port Credit, which is just on the, on the border of, of Toronto and Mississauga. Mm -hmm. And on the lake, we just moved by the lake. There was a beautiful little view of Lake Ontario. Wow. Um, I love this environment. I love this space because I got a little bit of the city, but I got a lot of nice quiet parks and the view of the lake oh, that I live in there. Um, and I've been here all my life and I've never oh, had a desire to move outside of Toronto. Um, love traveling, but I have everything I need here. It's quite diverse here. Beautiful food, beautiful places to visit. Love the music scene here. Oh. And my family is here, so that keep, awesome. they keep me grounded. And <laughs> not, so, yeah, it's so, all so good. what what music are you into? Oh, anything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play? Do you play? I'm curious. I play, I play the guitar right now. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Charles. This was really Thank fantastic you, and good to connect with you again. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Awesome.